Now, one thing you'll notice, and it can be very frustrating, you put the colour on, you think it's perfectly dark, but when it dries, it dries much paler. Well, the solution is go back when it's dry and put another layer on. And I'm just doing that here, where we've got the really dark reflections, and I've just added another layer of dark reflections over the ones I've already put on because they've gone pale. And here, I'm just going to strengthen some of this reflection up a little bit. But I don't want to do it too much because it could spoil it. Again, a little bit, little bit more strength. And just a few reflections, brush strokes, dragged across. So that just keeps it strong. And now we've got the smaller reflections in the distance, ripples, picking up darks and reflecting them. And we'll just put those across there. And then in the further distance, that's dry brush. This is rough paper. And when you drag the brush on rough paper, you get that sort of scuffed effect. So I've got the distant ripples as well. And I'm going to let that dry now. I'll come back to that in a minute and put any finishing touches on once it's dry. I don't want to do any more because I'll be risking overworking it. So I'll leave it now, let it dry, do a few extra touches, then we'll take off the masking fluid, tidy it up, and it'll be finished. Now we're just going to make those sparkles glare a little bit. And this is quite a good trick. This is a small, stiff brush and some kitchen roll. What we do is wet the brush and we blur across some of the masked sparkles, like that, and dab. Just give it a little bit of a blurred edge, not much. But what that will do is give it some glare when the masking's removed. It'll make it look, well, hopefully, it'll make it look dazzling. Just putting a little bit of dazzle in by removing some of the colour round the masked sparkles. So get the stiff brush in, damp brush round the masked sparkles, and just give it a bit of a rub one or two places. And you can also do this when the masking's taken off. The disadvantage with that is that you'll actually rub paint across the masked area. And you want to keep that completely clean. It can be done, but it's just a little bit more awkward. Here we are, a few little, few little sparkles here. Rub across them, and we'll see what happens when all the masking comes off. Now what I'm going to do is carefully remove the masking fluid. I'm just going to dry my hands. They get a little bit sweaty, and you don't want that on the paper, so just get your hands dry, and we'll start to remove the masking fluid. We just do that simply by rubbing. So we rub the masking off. There we go. Those are the shiny white bits on the edges of the boats. Just clean my fingers off a little bit halfway as they get start to pick up a little bit of dark paint, which can get rubbed back on. I'm not rubbing off the masking fluid from the water quite yet, because some of that will still be just a little bit damp from where I rubbed over it. What I will do is get a dry brush and sweep off all the old masking fluid from the painting. Get that out of the way. And now we can go back to the boat and just start to tidy it up in places. So I'll get a nice small brush, nice well-pointing brush. And just where this masking is a little bit untidy, we can tidy it up. I'll, I'll have the colour shaper in one hand because that can act as a rubber. Very useful. So where it's just 
gone over the edge slightly, just paint along like that, and that tidies it up. I tend to paint along underneath because that dark might show up and it will make sense as a shadow. So that's that bit done. Slim the lines down, tidy them up a little bit here and there. That's it. Doesn't take long and it's much easier than trying to paint round them and much more effective than painting them on with white paint at the end of the painting. Just underneath the keel where it comes up into the back of the boat. A little bit of a line there. We've got this rope here. Wouldn't actually be white, so we've just painted a little bit of colour over it. There you go. Where it goes down into the water. And we can do the same with this one. Put a little bit of grey on here from the palette. The colour doesn't matter too much, exactly which colour you're going to use. Same here. Little details like that all around the painting. And any little details that need to be put back in. Now here's another little trick, get a bit of red. I always like to put a bit of red into a painting if I possibly can. I'm using quinacridone magenta, I'm just putting it on the edge of the palette there. A little bit of magenta and a uh, little bit of burnt sienna just to calm it down. And that will do as a red, almost, uh, it's almost Venetian red which you can buy in a tube just a little bit brighter. And now we just dot that round and put a little bit of red here and there onto the painting. Could be fabric or cloth. Uh, they have these red carpets sometimes at the backs of the boats. I don't know. But it'll just bring it to life a tiny little bit. And I reckon this little lot now will be dry enough to remove. So we'll start to get the sparkles off. I'm just going to take the masking tape off the edge, peel that away, so there we go. And that reveals a nice clean image. And sometimes you can see the painting much more clearly without all the paint going off the edges. There we have it. I've just spotted one more little thing, a bit of a pole that's missing. So we put that in down there like that. And that's it. A scene of some gondolas in Venice. So let's just recap what we've done. The first thing was to mask the edges of the gondolas and then we use the special technique, very easy, to mask the sparkles. The next thing, mix colour and apply it to the sky and the water. Then we put in the distant backdrop and we did it in one flat wash and put a little bit of detail on it later. Very straightforward. The next thing we did was to start building up the boats starting with blue and then the darker colours. And then the final thing was to put in the reflections with very strong mixes of colour, remove the masking and finish off any tiny little details. And that completed the painting. Maybe you lack a little bit of confidence and feel you can't do a painting like this. If you do, don't worry, you're in pretty good company. Most artists feel this way at one time or another. Just remember, Mix plenty of colour, keep it simple, and most of all, enjoy yourself. Well, happy painting, and I'll see you next time.
One thing you have to be careful with is not to drop a blob of masking fluid onto the paper. That's the masking finished. Put the lid back on. Would you believe that? Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.